This video is brought to you by my $5 or more patrons at patreon.com slash alexheights. I'd like to thank Manchester Pictures, Identitech, Steve Aldersley, Anthony Coleman, Derek, Kurt David, Joe Brown, Alex M, SBP, Mason Frost, Matthew McLaughlin, Andreas Glacel, and Biff C for sponsoring this video, supporting me, my family, the channel, encouraging all this nonsense. Thank you everyone so much. I hope you enjoy the video. Cheers, everyone. I hope you are all doing fantastic. I have had a little bit of a busy time. Sorry, it's taken me a while to get to this one. Um, March 11th. Man, it's been over like, it's like 15 days. I'm sorry. Um, been busy. Uh, recorded a few other things. Um, recently upgraded my PC. Got a brand new case, power supply, new RAM, and then M.2 drive for recording or edit, video editing, all that, you know, good tech stuff. So, coming at you today with the final pavement album terror twilight this is a good i was just about to say this is a good album as though i was doing a, a follow-up video which i am not um and i still need to record my follow-ups to the previous two so i'm not gonna say anything about how i feel about those yet anyway last pavement album we will also be doing a couple eps and um a, like a b-side from the bright in the corners era so we're just doing a little bit of a pickup job some extra stuff at the end of this um, after Terror Twilight, and it'll all amount to like 50, 55 minutes, something like that. So, uh, yeah, um, 11 tracks, um, indie rock, 44 minutes. Um, people are kind of mixed on this one. Some people say it's some among their favorite pavement stuff. Other people say like, eh, it's okay. Um, I could definitely see them getting a little more like normal or like basic or mainstream with Bright in the Corners. They still were very quirky. Uh, but it was definitely their most like grounded album uh, so far, with Wowie Zowie being kind of crazy and sort of a mix of the first two albums. Um, so I'm interested to see what this one's going to be like. We have 11 tracks I've heard Spit on a Stranger before, the opening track, uh, but I don't think we've heard any others. Uh, Nigel Godrich producing on this, which is very interesting. We got Johnny Greenwood doing harmonica on two tracks, which is bizarre, but you know. That's payment for you, right? So, uh, we're just going to jump right on in. A uh, track I've already heard before, Spit on a Stranger. However you feel, It's just a really solid indie rock track. Um, there's like hardly anything wrong with it. And like some might argue that like basic pavement is maybe a little more boring or something, but I still think like, I think the production on the last album and uh, on this track is pretty good. Um, there's a warmth to it. Um, I, I don't know. There's something almost kind of comforting and soothing about like, you know, uh, that kind of like, down to earth melancholy kind of pavement you know like tracks like here um off of the debut i don't know i just i i have a thing for that and of course i bet this next one folk jam is probably just going to be insane right let's see oh enjoy Is that a banjo? Who played the banjo? Oh, 
Well, there it is. Um, you know, I'm kind of getting some vibes from like other '90s and uh, in, in late and in early 2000s indie bands here. I don't know if that's just me, but like, not that they even sound the same, just vibes, which is a very, you know, that's more of like a what a band makes me feel. You know, like certain albums make me feel certain ways and feel certain things. Um, and like this is getting close to like vibes that I get from like Wilco, The Shins, maybe Modest Mouse to a small degree. Um, it's just that like, you know, turn of the millennium kind of vibe with, with indie rock. I don't know. It's interesting. You are a light. I thought I already reacted to Dark Side of the Moon. This is Pavement's Kid A. <laughs> it's just because Ni Ni Nigel Godrich is producing. That's the only reason why. Um, yeah, I can see myself not necessarily liking this one as much as others, but there's really nothing wrong with it. Um, it's been consistent so far. Spit on a Stranger is definitely the best track so far, but um, yeah, I, I, I like the... Um, it's not even necessarily experimentation. It's just they're doing some different stuff. Um, it's not necessarily um, like as simple as something like Bright in the Corners. It seems a little bit different, which is cool. Cream of Gold. The guitar tones on it on this album are really good so far. That's pretty cool. I'm noticing that on this one, like the the styles that Pavement usually toys with, uh, like the more aggressive, you know, kind of tracks or whatever, it's coming through in a much more palatable way for me here. And I think the production is just really good. I think Godrich is really nailing it here. Um, not that I'm like impartial to his production or anything. I mean, Radiohead is among my favorite bands, but... Um, I think he just is a good producer and he makes music sound good. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a little more adventurous than Bright in the Corners, I think. Um, I'm I'm liking it so far. I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm digging it. This isn't necessarily like pitch perfect pavement to me. Um, but we'll see. I mean, you know, every, every album's a new adventure. Major Leagues. Ooh. I like this. All 
I really like their like Americana or alt country tracks. I just learned that there's a new Antlers album out today. Wow. It has Solstice and it, it Is What It Is on it. I love those tracks. I thought they were just going to be singles. I liked Major Leagues quite a bit. Like I said in the song, um, when Pavement does these like slower melancholy tracks, it's like, that's like just prime 90s indie rock. I, I don't know. It's like... You think of certain like eras, you know, like 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever it might be. There's always like two sides to the coin, right? There's the happy side and the the down, down, sad side, up and down. Um, and with the up, you know, like you think of pop. And with the down, you might think of, you know, this kind of more melancholy rock or um, just maybe certain types of genres. But like when I hear Pavement do these slower tracks like that, I just think that like that's like pitch perfect down music for the 90s. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys know what I'm getting at. Platform Blues. Let's go, Johnny. It's good. Um, I'm almost getting like, it sounded like the Johnny Marr harmonica from the last electronic album, actually. Um, very interesting kind of, you know, crazy harmonica. Uh, a lot of cool moments in that. I don't know if I necessarily like love it, um, but there is a lot of interesting moments. Um, yeah, good. Not really any duds yet. Uh, normally with Pavement, there's at least like one or two tracks where I'm just like, eh. There's no Canberg tracks this time, but, uh, and don't cry. Uh, it's okay. That's probably the dud, right? Um, it, it was fine. Nothing amazing. Just solid, but not great. You know what I mean? Billy! Billy, what you doing? Hmm. Perfect. 
looked in so many ways, but you never looked hard. Stigmatized beings who ought to have a second chance. And hurricanes spin like debutantes. See the fortune teller with the rising tide. Ship that Holland days. Feel the hot that love to shade. See the longing tired of the best years of my life. Good. Um, I like it better than And Don't Cry. It's still not necessarily as good as some of the previous tracks. Um, but again, it had its moments. It had its moments. Uh, let's keep trucking. Got still a good chunk to listen to. Speak, see, remember. Not bad. Uh, I dug that one, actually. Uh, not a favorite. Basically, everything after Platform Blues, I'm kind of eh on. I like the first half more, I think. But that one, that one was, 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 was the hex. Um, interesting. Not a bad track at all. Uh, it's kind of cool, actually. Um, they haven't really done any kind of like progressive, darker track like that before, have they? If they have, I don't remember. Um, all right, let's go to the last track and then we'll do a couple short EPs and then a, uh, a small B side as well. So Carrot Rope.
can't quite put my finger on it, but I feel like that's like such a fitting way for pavement to go out. I don't know. I, I like that. So, uh, there is Terror Twilight. Um, definitely like the first half more. Spit on a Stranger is great. Um, you Are a Light was interesting. Cream of Gold was cool. Major Leagues was great. Um, last two tracks are very interesting as well. Uh, really it was just Anne, Don't Cry, and Billy that I were, I was kind of like, eh, on. Platform Blues was a little odd as well, but, um, do I like it more than Bright in the Corners? I don't know. I don't know. But let's, uh, keep going forward. We got some extra stuff to do here, so this will be changing a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go with Watery Domestic. I believe this was an EP between Slanted and Enchanted and Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain. We got four tracks on this thing. Front words I have heard before. Um, but like once a long time ago. Um, so we got four tracks. Let's truck through this. Texas never whispers. Oh boy. That was a cool track. I like that. Um, I mean, that goes head to head with like the, the half of Slanted and Enchanted I like the least, honestly. Uh, good. Okay. Front words like this one. stuff lions in parentheses linden feed them to the linden lions there's different uh different uh titles to this one i don't know which one is official what is what does wikipedia have to say about this one is it on wikipedia watery domestic uh feed them to the lions in parentheses linden i'm getting all kinds of mixed signals on this one whatever whatever it says right here that's what it's going to be It was okay. It wasn't great. It was fine. Shoot the singer with only one sick verse. Someone took in these pants. Some of us in the saints. But I remember. Therefore, my hand shook. Down and out the camera land. I like that one. That was like a, a really good snapshot of between Slanted and Crooked Rain. Um, and that, that opening line. 
really got me for some reason. Someone's took in these pants. Uh, all right, so that is Watery Domestic. Solid EP, solid. Um, I like pretty much all the tracks except for the short one. Um, so now Pacific Trim. Uh, 96, I believe this was right after, right before uh, Wowie Zowie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Three tracks here. Uh, give it a day. Not bad. Playful, silly. I could see how that'd be like a Wowie era track. Um, it's just solid. Like a lot of Wowie Zowie. It's just, it hits the notes. Oh, no pun intended. Gangsters and pranksters. Uh, okay. That was, that was there and gone. That was funny, though. Um, Sag Saginaw. Saginaw. What is this track? Okay, buddy. Okay. Uh, that was also a fine EP. Um, Nothing uh, incredible, but, you know, more solid tracks. Um, okay, so now this is Harness Your Hopes. I'm kind of confused because I think that on Spotify, this is like on the the Nicene Credence edition of Bright in the Corners. But it's a, I think it's a track from 99, like uh, Terror Twilight era. So I'm not quite sure where this lands. I'll put the right image up here. Um, but this is apparently just a really solid B-side that uh, most Pavement fans say, uh, if you like Pavement, you should listen to it. So this will end our Pavement binge. Let's go, guys. Harness your hopes. Solid stuff. I like that. That's good. Um, like, what is it with Malkmus and just making these incredibly catchy and unique 
lyrical, melodic, uh, like symmetry, symbiosis things. You can quote me on that if you like. Um, so apparently it was uh, included on the Spit on a Stranger single, but it was included on the Nicene Creedence edition because it was recorded and mixed during the Brighten the Corners sessions. So there you go. Um, yeah, there's Pavement, everybody. Done. Done. Um, great band. Great band. One of the best alt-rock bands of the 90s, honestly. Great stuff. Um, I mean, I'll kind of reflect back on the whole band as a whole, and we'll maybe even do a discussion on the Discord at some point in the future. Um, but I'll reflect on the whole band, uh, or like the whole discography and the band in the follow-up for, for this one, uh, for Terra Twilight. Um, but just great stuff. Really solid work. Excellent. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is probably kind of a longer one because uh, it was anywhere from 55 to 60 minutes of material that I had to cover. Um, but we're done. We're done with pavement. So poll album will be next. Head to the Discord, which I'll plug in a moment. Um, if you would like to contribute to the four albums I will listen to next. Um, so things to plug, patreon.com slash alexheights. Head on over there if you'd like to support the channel. Dollar a month is all you need to vote in the polls that we will do, which we have one coming up right now. Um, and uh, every dollar helps, uh, you know, every every bit that it has added to the pool uh, allows me to do this more and more. So uh, if you're uh, inclined to do that, head on over there. And then the Discord, also link in the description. Uh, music discussion, music recommendations, uh, controversial debate, all kinds of things happen over there. Lots of fun and lots of headache as well. <laughs> it's, it's, it's everything as a, a good Discord server should be. Um, and like I said, uh, the poll, uh, we alternate between me picking four albums and um, the Discord people picking four albums. And now it's the Discord's turn. So if you want to get in on choosing a new album for me to listen to, head on over to the Discord ASAP. Uh, and that's all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, until next time, fare thee well. Godspeed.